Good evening and welcome to Discover Tinley. Tinley Park has been very fortunate in the last year in that we've had several visitors. And with me tonight are two of our visitors from Germany, Princess Elizabeth and Prince Ferdinand from Isenburg und Wuddingen. Hopefully I got that close. Um, who've been visiting us for the Oktoberfest season. And um, as I understand it, and I don't know who wants to take the question, this is your first trip to the Midwest area. Um, what do you think of the Chicago land area? I think this area here is very similar to Mid-Europe. And uh, I like all the green and the forest around here. And I just want to say I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad that you do like the area. Have you had a chance to see Chicago some? very much. We just have been there one night going to the symphony and coming in by the airplane and so we haven't had really time to see Chicago. But what we have seen of Chicago, I think it's one of the nicest towns in the U.S. What has been your impressions of some of the things you've seen? Anything that's highlighted uh, of the things you've seen in the last few days? I, I want to say being on the Oktoberfest, seeing a lot of schools here and hospitals and a lot of people we met a lot of people in during this short week i must say they are very nice very friendly and i like them all very much and i think uh, i feel very home here i think i will come back soon <laughs> beautiful i'm sure that when i can say you know we'd love to have you back and speak for everyone um, I had the opportunity to talk with you a little earlier during the parade, the Oktoberfest parade. Um, but I understand, uh, this one's for Princess, uh, that you're involved in the medical profession. Yes, I'm a trained physiotherapist and I'm very interested in the medical part. And Christ Hospital is trying to get you to come back and... Yes, they asked me to be the patron and I said yes, I would like to do that. And I think it's a very nice thing to do. And so I hope to come back next year. Beautiful. Well, that's Beautiful. terrific. We'll look forward to having you. Of course, you know you're welcome to come back into Tinley. Um, We've got some yes. connection with Tinley Park and yeah. Yeah, Budingen, I understand. Yeah. Can you relate some of the connection uh, a little bit with, with your, your yes. area? I hope uh, that we get Tinley Park and Budingen together as sister towns. And uh, I heard about that the mayor of Budding is coming next year. Mm. About what I am thinking about is the next parade on the Oktoberfest, I send over the whole shooting, uh, shooting club. Oh, oh that would be <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> the margin uniform, fantastic. Is that right? And I would be an officer next year in the shooting club, and I will command them. Why not? <laughs> That would be a first, I think, for Tim Lee Parker. Charlie any would area. love that. With yes. <laughs> Beautiful. But the connection is also, we have seen uh, people from Tim Lee Park that have been coming to Breeding two years ago. Yes. Two years ago. I came to Breeding to see the town and my family, and so we had quite a nice time with them, several days in Breeding. And also this year, in August, we saw two of the Tim Lee Park people coming to us. It was Patrick Gray. So he talked to us and asked us to come back to Tenby Park this year for the Oktoberfest and we decided to do it. So we're here now. Your family has a long history in that area of Germany. Both of your families understand. I, I saw your presentation at the Landmark Museum the other night and uh, I remember one comment you said you're the only family that's had the same address for a thousand years. Uh, yes. <laughs> Can you talk a little about some of your family's uh, history and your, your family's history and background uh, so you get a little flavor of what's Yes, what the East Book family is <coughs> situated in Buding and in Buding Castle since more than a thousand years. And we were responsible for the forest of the Emperor and being something like a postmaster. We looked after the big forest, and so in the later years, the parts of this forest switched over, and being now the estates of my father's, and uh, we still live in the same house, and uh, we opened some 
little industries in this area. Uh, that's one thing what is quite interesting. My great great grandfather opened a big pottery a factory and still exists to, to stop the emigration to the United States to give the men work that, uh, that they can stay at home and don't have to go to the United States. That was in the mid of the last century, about 150 years ago, uh, yeah, 100 years ago. And uh, this pottery is, uh, still exists and is worldwide now. We have a factory in Spain and in Germany and a selling firm in Kansas City. Uh, mm. There's a big showroom in New York. And is we that tried the, to do all that. the place with the dish and fried Yes, yeah. that's a This place. is a family coat of arms? Yes, that's a family, that's a place where this is made. And that's a family coat of arms. Uh, there's an old story about Emperor Barbarossa lost in the forest. He was he lost his uh, company uh, during hunting and he met an old coal miner and he asked the coal miner, good man, tell me where's the way to the next village or to the next parcel and he said, okay. Yeah, and he pointed out with his dirty black fingers into the snow two black stripes and that's the coat of arms of my family now. It's a fairy tale, but we had it before. But that means that the white shield with two black stripes on it is mounted by a helmet with two eagle wings. And on the eagle wings, you can't see it on here, but normally there are se on each one seven golden leaves. And the crown, that a, is a prince, and prince uh, head, and this is the coat. And that's a signature of my father. And that's all is made in our pottery, especially made for this visit here. Mm. That's terrific. Beautiful. That, uh, that will be hung in the village hall and yeah. open for displays. Um, you have children, um, they go to school, or do they go through like a special program? Or they may be past school, I'm not sure. I know you have two children. Yes, we've got two children, they're 11 and 8 years old, two boys. They're going to just normal school, primary school, and then we call it gymnasium at home. So we took them to your high school here. And they just go with everybody else. There's, there's no special uh, no, no special. School. Just normal. And they've got to make the grade just along with everybody else. Okay, nowadays, it, I think it's very important that, that we bring our children up like that. Like normal country. Mm -hmm. And normal type kids activities over yeah. there, German. We sometimes we think there's some difference between countries, but I think kids are kids no matter I where they are. The same all over the yeah. place. Yeah. That's pretty good. I understand you've had your family has some connection with the International Red Cross Foundation. Uh, yes. Uh, can you relate some of that? Uh, it was the founder of the Red Cross was Henri Dino. And he was looking after the wounded soldiers in the battle of Solferino between Austria and France in northern Italy. And on the battlefield in the evening, there was found a very nice horse. And they stopped the horse and looked up whom it belonged to. And they found the name in Prince Isenburg, Bruno Prince to Isenburg. And they looked from the dead and the wounded people were those officers and they found him and nursed him. And from this time on, Fritz Bruno Eastbrook helped Henri Dino to found the Red Cross to give him more power and he brought him in. We're celebrating as a country, we've just celebrated our 200th birthday and the 200th anniversary of the Constitution. <coughs> and I think to the children, 200 years seems like a long time. How do you instill the sense of history of thousands of years, or a thousand years? Is it so different, or do you just learn to think in longer lengths of time? I think it's just a question.
question of education or bringing up. They are born in here, 200 years is a very long time. A thousand years is a very long time too, but in 800 years America will be a thousand years old too. Well, that's we true. hope. <laughs> yes. Um, you had a chance to uh, hear the Chicago Symphony, I understand. Yes. And do you have a, um, a personal friendship there, or you had an invitation from Sir George? We had an invitation, and um, I think it came through Petra. Uh, did you get a chance to meet Sir George? Yeah. Yes, we yeah. did. Yeah. He's a remarkable person. He's a remarkable uh, what did you think of our symphony? I think it's fantastic. I've seen them. All pretty proud of that, I think. Yes. Super. Very, very good. Uh, you've heard a lot of different... Is the music that you've heard at the fest any different than the type of music that you'd be exposed to back home? At the October Fest? Mm -hmm. No, I think it's very similar. Because in one time you have got the sort of original countryside yeah, well, that's a lady there. What did you think of the, the country music and the rock and roll, or, or she probably heard some of it already? I think it was quite amusing, and yeah. everybody enjoyed themselves, and I think it's like everywhere else. Yeah. And also, they tried to play German music. <laughs> did they really? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, they wanted to. Uh, yes. They made a very good job. Do you have an Oktoberfest celebration in your town area, or is that only in Munich? We hear so much about. Mainly in Munich. I mean, some of the little towns do something similar, but um, it's not the same. Munich is the Oktoberfest center. Everybody in Germany goes yes. to there. It's international. Yes. Everybody comes there. Also the Americans. Is it? Well, obviously, it's quite different than our Oktoberfest, but is it literally a party that shuts the city down? I've heard that during Oktoberfest in Munich, nothing, you know, everybody parties, period. Um, we're not quite ready to do that in Italy. You know, it's not that, you know, the whole town is sort of shut down. It's a bit outside, and they have their grounds, and it's always at the same grounds. Oh, so it is. In a yeah. separate facility, yes. it's not the town. Yes, you get the not impression. in the town itself. No, no. No, no. They have their own grounds and big tents, and you know, every year they build up the same sort of thing. We don't know the exact numbers, but how many tents there are, but they're all tents about this 5,000 people in mm -hmm. 10,000 people. They're enormous tents. Oh my gosh. And uh, I wished I would, if you would. Ask me before I would look up how many beers they are drinking. No. <laughs> but I make a bet it's, it's more than one pond for one food. Yes, I think so. A lake. <laughs> Quite a bit. Is there something about your background or for your family? It's been like you're in a different, your, your background's in a different area of Germany than you're in? Or? Yes, I'm coming from the far north of Germany. It's called Schleswig Holstein. And my family name also has been Schleswig Holstein. And uh, it's 10 minutes from the Danish border. <coughs> so it's very flat, and it's between two seas. It's the Baltic Sea on the one side, and on the other side is the North Sea. And I think it's quite a beautiful country, too. It's very green. It's more farming than anything else. It's not so much forest like in this country. Uh, quite a lot of wind. Yes. <laughs> it's similar, it's sort of Denmark, Schleswig Holstein is the same sort of scene. Yeah. Beautiful country around there. I've been to Germany a couple of times. And I've, so I've never been to, uh, to the Euro area over there so much, but I've been up near to Denmark. So yes. Yeah. Any other highlights of your visit here that you uh, really stick out in your mind, other than your, your visit with uh, the Chicago Symphony, and you've been to so many other places. Uh, is there anything else that kind of sticks out in your mind as a, as a memorable thing you've seen in the last few days? I must say, I don't want to point out my notes. I want to say one thing. The whole wizard was a high mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to coming next time. Uh, I, I think 
every single shoot. How long were you here? You've been here for what? A week. A week. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a long, long tour. And you're going back. Are you going back to Germany or on to somewhere else? We are going to San Antonio tomorrow. Tomorrow night, visiting friends. Mm -hmm. And we're going back on the 12th of October. What kind of years, what's your town like? What kind of city life or town life do you have? So we can compare Midwestern Tinley Park towns to what your village or town, how big is it? Uh, what kinds of things go on in town there? And what, what the old part, part and the town of Reading is about 10,000 inhabitants. And uh, what is quite interesting for you, there's 3,000 Americans. Soldiers. <laughs> and building is um, and big building is about 23 south with all the villages around there uh, came to the city of building. But building itself is a middle from the middle age and it is uh, very well re reconstructed old town with very old houses. This one this is one of the last really good, in a good form, standing wall around the oldest part of the building. We have a nice castle there. We have one of the oldest churches in Germany, called the Remigius Kapelle, in building itself. It's now used not daily use for church and both, but special it, for special occasions. And uh, we always were very lucky because the tourists forgot building. <laughs> <laughs> but now, since the last, let's say, five years, don't let my mayor in building hear this, <laughs> but in the last five years, the tourists started to look after building and in summertime, summertime, on weekends it's open crowded. Mm -hmm. might, and the best thing is to stay in your house. <laughs> is there a main industry in town or what do most of the people do for work or employment? We have little industries around. There's one factory, <coughs> batteries, uh, there's some other little factories, but most of the workmen going to Franklin or Kana, that's about 30 miles. Mm -hmm. So close enough to easily commute. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Would, would the uh, people working into the city or into Frankfurt from your town, would it uh, be, in a sense, considered uh, a bedroom community in the sense are you developing uh, more living space where people are living there but working in the city and commuting? Or is that not yet to a point where Frankfurt uh, would be a major, I mean, I know Frankfurt's a major uh, urban city. And yes. do, you, do you get, we, Tinley Park has a large population of people that live here yet work in the city and move here knowing they were going to commute. Uh, well, it's not just a sleeping place, we hope, for most of them. And a lot of them are the people you met this, you know, last few days who are involved in their community. But the concept of bedroom community, suburban community, came about from that. And I'm just wondering if it's not, I want to say, carried back to Europe, but it's the same type of thing, only just not thought of in that way. It's occurring there when you're developing but living communities outside. But I think it's the same in the whole, in the whole world. It starts that industry gets centers. Mm -hmm. And there's working centers and there are living centers. And I hope that building in our town where, I, where we come from stays a living center. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have enough industry like Hana, Frankfurt. Germany is such a small country. Everything is not far away. So it is absolutely possible for everybody to go to work and live in Have a good time there. 
I think that's one of the things that to, in talking, Ron, and when we talked to the Baron uh, on Madel earlier this year, we think of every other country as being as big as the United States. We seem to forget that the, the physical expanse of the country you know, um, creates some different thinking about things. Well, we live in the same country, but it's, it must be huge. It must be able to um, travel around. Although, would a town of 10,000 or you said 22,000, would that be considered small, medium, large? I don't know how to. No, it's small. It's, it's small. a small town. Do you are you working with your profession much at all, or are you working in a hospital, or how do you use your physical therapist? Uh, yes, I still work, but I'm not working in a hospital anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm working in a practice mm -hmm. so that I can do those sort of two or three times a week in the morning when the children are at school. Mm -hmm. sort of keep up a the general population or children you work with or um, in the all moment, ages? Sort of mainly children because mm -hmm. I prefer to work with the children. I love the children and it's quite a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. And you see what you're doing, you see the results, so I think it's quite nice. It's not so depressing. <laughs> you said you have two, two children. Yes. Um, just out of curiosity, did they ask you to bring something in particular back? I always remember if my parents travel when I was a child, I would try to pick something I knew they would be able If I'm just curious as to whether they would think there was something here that they would want, uh, you know, Mickey Mouse t-shirts or whatever, as opposed to what might be a little Cowboy stuff. Cowboy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> really? And they love t-shirts and things. The t-shirts. Was there any? Right? Right? You know, what you're going to, they love the different t-shirts. Popular. Yes, <laughs> and they play soccer, so you know, we'll find something about that. How oh, are they doing in soccer? Uh, yeah. Quite good. Yes. <laughs> the weekends have no time. Always off doing something. They wouldn't have missed you then too much. No. I don't think so. Well, you <laughs> hope so, though. <laughs> we hope they do. It's good. So we, I, I gave you uh, some t-shirts there in the park district, so I hope they can wear those a bit healthy. I got a few from other places too, so there'll be a separate t-shirt for a while. Take your pockets. Okay. PR for you. <laughs> In booting. Yes. Yeah. Well, they like that. Yeah. Well, um, I know that your schedule is such that they've still got you going to about seven different places tonight or something. <laughs> uh, we've enjoyed you being able to stop and talk with us, and I know that our viewers will have enjoyed being able to visit with you via the tape. And uh, we're very pleased to have you to the park. Hope you've enjoyed your stay. It's been, we've had four beautiful days of weather for the October fest, so obviously we're going to have to come back next year to guarantee the same weather. Yes. yes. We will. <laughs> with, with the whole Army, uh, uh, not Army, uh, Rifle Club. Shooting Club. Shooting Club. Shooting club. You shooting club. Up, we tried to get them. We asked them. Oh. <laughs> that would be super. That would be terrific. We'd love to have them. Well, Prince Ferdinand, Princess Elizabeth, we really appreciate your coming here, taking some time to talk to us, and I know Tony Park appreciates your visit too, so we hope to see you guys sometime. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching.